Well, let's get into the show. Our first guest tonight has been in a number of great projects. You may have seen him in Dark Matter, Hello Again, The Atom Project, Jenny in Georgia, but he's here tonight to talk about the upcoming release of Code 8 Part 2, the sequel to Code 8, coming to Netflix next week. Welcome back to the program, Alex Malari Jr. Hey, y'all. How goes? It's going all right. How's it going with you, man? Good. Good. What an intro. Yeah, I do what I can. I do what I can. I do what I can. Say. Well, to be fair, though, it's it, it's not hard with you. You your 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 list of credentials, your bona fides are extensive these days. From back <laughs> when we first met you on Dark Matter, like it's you just you've been racking them up. I've been trying to. It doesn't feel like it on my end, but then I look at the the body of work. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it never when you're in it, it never feels like you know. Oh my gosh, I've done all this stuff. It's very much like, okay, when's the next project? I got to get out there. I got to do the work. Totally. Yeah, he's he's a Pokemon collector. <laughs> got to get them all. Sure. Not wrong there. Sure. Yeah. Not wrong there. <laughs> I love my Pokemon cards. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Now, uh, of course, Code Eight Part Two. The original Code Eight came out, I think, what, in 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, this is the sequel to it. For people who haven't seen the first Code 8 or haven't heard about this film, what is Code 8 Part 2 all about? Code 8 Part 2 is... Well, those robots, the, the police that we had in the first one, the population thought, you know, maybe these are a little too violent. I don't think they're working. And so this time around, we bring in canines and um i get to play king who is really just trying to make the best out of uh lincoln city for himself yeah <laughs> i kind of like to think of it, if, if it was from king's perspective i think the movie's about a boy and his dog i do <laughs> i'll take it that's a great way to put that yeah <laughs> oh man but this of course you had a smaller role in the first film but now your character you're the lead antagonist of this film coming back to do this with the the ml boys uh what was it like getting to you know again you've played villains before but this villain has there's just such like a it's like a glossy sheen of just arrogance just coming off this guy what was it like to play him it was icky <laughs> <laughs> it was like listen uh usually I, I get into a place where um i need to try to be that character for a little bit and i'll be at home trying things and um my partner was like so you know what do i have to deal with because you told me this guy is pretty monstrous and i was like honestly i could just go to work act and i can leave it there because at the end of the day he's just a you know, he's a face. He puts on a face. Um, I know we all do to a certain extent, but he's, uh, yeah, he's a little more motivated. Let's say that. Yeah. It, as I was watching um, the film it, I, I in, and realizing that it's, you're this, basically the exact same character. It's just, you know, it's, he's moved up in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you took what was ostensibly like one scene, very small, like in the original film, and they've built a whole movie around your character here. Like when you did the first one, you like, I got to assume that there was no thought like, oh, I'm going to be back for a sequel. And then they're going to make me like, the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the big lead here. Yeah, no, you know what? That was not the plan at all. <laughs> um, casting wise, I was, um. I was offered another role, um, a much, much smaller role. And they were going a totally different direction for King. And Jeff Chan, the director, we were on a phone call and he's like, you know what? Do you want to try for King? I know you, like, I know it was different in the first movie, but do you want to try it? And uh, he goes, I won't be able to offer you this role. You'll have to go through the audition process. I was totally fine with that, but I you know, I had to jump at it, especially after reading the script. I had to jump at the uh, at the opportunity, so I went through the audition process, and you know, it was a uh, it was a few few sessions, and um, yeah, Jeff gave me a call and said, "Hey, let's go make this movie." 
And that was that. Nice. But they did not build it around that first character. It was just one of those thoughts. You know, it was an afterthought, really. Yeah, but it works out very effectively. That's the, you know, like oh, it this does. The, and, and, you know, and that was the thing about that. It was like, it was this extra layer. It was like, oh, yeah. You're, I, I remember as I was watching it, I was thinking a lot of this early on part of the story makes a lot of sense knowing who he was in the in the first film i could totally get why somebody might be a little bit more open to different avenues of income right yeah. and 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 and, right. and and a viewpoint against the uh the the powered individuals in this universe and then of course the story unfolds and we get something totally different and as i, I was watching it it's it's great to watch because of that but also i was thinking about the those dogs the the canine units Right. And I'm just curious, like, obviously there's, there's special effects and, you know, and whatnot, but like how much of the dogs is special effects yeah, and were there practical? Any, yeah. Yeah. Like were there any practical dogs on set? Yeah. Yeah. I think we had one or two, um, whenever it's still and not doing anything, uh, there was a practical dog there and they built a, a, just this beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but apart from that, when it's moving, it was actually a guy in a suit doing the rollovers okay. and whatnot. And so here I am trying to be king and, and here's this guy in a suit pretending to be a dog. And, you know, give me more credit for that. Now that you know that, you know, yeah, I deserve yeah. a little more credit. <laughs> well, you take the cameras away and it's just a weird kinky thing. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm so happy I didn't have a leash now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. If there's anybody in the production that has stills of... <laughs> Alex with the quote unquote dog. We'd love for you to put them up online. That would be hilarious. Oh, man. oh we got an email in. Through. We got an email in from Kelly T who says, Hey geeks, big fan of Alex. Uh, then goes on Thank to you. give a little bit of the review for the show we're going to be reviewing. So I'll save that for them. But then ends off by saying, Hey, happy new year. Even though late. When was Lunar New Year? Was that two weeks ago? Lunar New Year? Something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, thank oh, you. I still have oranges. So. There you go. There you go. Ago. Well, I still, I still hope you get rich. There we go. Yeah. So <laughs> now. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, we in, all uh, do. I, I keep yeah. playing. I keep playing those lotto tickets, and they never yeah, win. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> oh man. So in this, probably you know, aside from the, the, of course, all the great actors and the dogs, another character in this is Monument Hill Towers. Such a interesting location and for me it was fun to watch it because i'm like every time i get off the go train and get onto the subway at main street station there it is that's because uh, it's main square for this yeah. um you got a couple i know you got a couple of scenes down a couple of big scenes down there what was it like shooting on location i heard that there was a lot of um given i heard that the crew was giving out uh, free gift cards to tim hortons for like residents because you guys were taking up the space and everything you know what? I did hear that lingering around set, but I wasn't sure that it actually had happened. So that's that's nice to hear that that really did go down. We took up all of Maine and Danforth. Um, our base camp was around. Um, if you're familiar with that area, there's a Canadian Tire. So our base camp was the parking lot there. Um, but filming there, the residents were great. They were welcoming um, for the most part, and. Um, the only thing, it was windy. It was insanely windy. It's a wind tunnel in there. And there were some really cool shots that we got. There was one where the bird like, was panning up, I think, to me and my crew. And then just these birds came in. And it was just perfect. I was like, good, Toronto birds. You know what you're doing here. <laughs> you know how to be Toronto. You've done this before. Seagulls. Always good to work with those Toronto birds. You know, sometimes <laughs> the Vancouver birds, you don't know what you're going to get. But Toronto birds, they know how to work. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, they know how to get it done there. Hopefully, you know, we get some raccoons next time. <laughs> who doesn't like a good Toronto raccoon as part of your set? You know, like who wouldn't want that? That's it. That's it. You know, I, uh, yeah, it, it, like it must have been, you know, uh, cool to be able to at least, you know, be kind of local, you know, like uh, doing a movie here, you know, versus like, say, traveling across the country or heading south or whatever, you know, being able to just, you know, essentially roll out of bed and just go to set. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I'm one of those guys that have uh, the one wheel uh, oh. board. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so I would just take my one wheel, go to set, and then go right home. So yeah, it was nice that it was that convenient. Oh, and it must be good. Like, uh, like when you get into a character, though, are you yeah. like somebody that's like in it, or is it nice to just go home and see the family every night? It's always nice. Like, when every time it's wrap, I'm the first one out of there. I I love being home. I love spending time with my family. Um, hopefully that got me some brownie points. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm genuine about that. Um, we'll clip this and send it to you to send. The... Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I, I need the space. So the first thing I did was ask the art department if I can get a lot of the um, LCPD, Lincoln City Police Department paraphernalia, just so I could just put it around my trailer um, to make it feel like it was my office. And um, one of the things I wanted with King was that classic police mustache that everyone just recognizes and i would play um the intro to jay-z's american Gang gangster album every morning because i approached king more like a gangster than i did a police officer it was just right to do it that way i felt anyways mm. yeah, yeah no but I, but I do like parting ways it, I, I like going home and just leaving work at where it is so yeah, so that so that as an actor that you that do you try to do that with every role or was it just something about this one that you wanted to do that more with? I, it depends. It depends, and it, I'm also very um, impulsive, so I could just be walking down the street or working out, and then I'll just go through my lines, and I kind of just tell people I'm lip syncing whatever I'm listening to or, or listening to an audio book or something, but it it's not a pretty sight half the time but so yeah so i'm very impulsive sometimes i'll just get into it sometimes i leave it just, i just see how i feel i'm not very adult in that manner am i should probably get a schedule going uh, it's okay you know the schedule is no they're therapy. overrated they're right. overrated it's working for you man like like i said <laughs> you, you, like looking at your credit list i was just like oh wow you have done so much like some things i didn't even know about and i was just like wow this is you know, like going back to all the way to Dark Matter when we first met you, you know, way yeah. back then. And it was like, oh, this is, you know, really cool dude. And, you know, hope for the best and all this. And I'm like looking and I'm like, bro, you just like, I know we joked it at the top, but you just you're like you're working like every day. Like this Seems is that way, right? <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> great. It's no, it has been a, a blessing of a journey. I've just been sneaking into a variety of rooms and hoping they see me and, and they have. So yeah. I'm thankful. And it's a variety of parts too. Like yeah. a lot of these projects are all very different. And yep. uh, one project, uh, of course, that uh, got a lot of attention at the beginning of 2023 would have to be the series Ginny and Georgia. It's season mm -hmm. two, I think, was the record holder for most watch in 2023 on Netflix. And uh, in it, of course, you play uh, private investigator Gabriel Cordova. Yeah. Very interesting character. I got to ask, what was the decision to do the Texan accent? Just felt like it. Just felt like it? Just You're like, hey, like I can it. do this Texan accent. I'm going to throw it in. I didn't know if I could. I was like, listen, I just think I watch enough Dr. Phil to get just that southwestern area, general area. Uh, no, but then uh, I tried it during one of our first cast read-throughs. And... I asked the dialect coach in the first season what he thought about it. And he's like, it sounds great. And Netflix ended up approving it. And uh, so there it was, because why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it, well, it was an interesting affectation, you know, like, uh, I guess there's a lot of accents in that, surprisingly enough. A lot of different American dialects are worked into that show. Yeah. Ooh, man. Yeah, it, it's... Uh... I like I can't even, oh man I just just thinking about the fact that you kind of based it on Dr. Phil is I didn't base it on no, no, he didn't he didn't base the character on Dr. No 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 but it I mean, the like accent. he shows up as like now Georgia <laughs> what problems are you trying what are the blocks in your life that you need to get out of the way he doesn't do that in the show now, no. I'm going to send you to a ranch <laughs> yeah. he always he has a ranch for everyone I feel yeah, like yeah I'm just saying, like, uh, of all inspirations in the world, Dr. Phil, I think, would be very low on my bingo card for uh, possible inspirations to a, any kind of 
affectation or characterization. That's what I'm getting at. It tells you what I watch. Yeah. <laughs> More along that kind of stuff. <laughs> so we know what about Alex right now is he collects Pokemon cards. He likes Dr. Phil. He's impulsive. He's got a, he's got a one wheel. You know, yeah. like it's uh, we're we're building a, a very eclectic picture here of you, but we've learned a lot about you Thank now. You. Um, <laughs> is there any past that. traumas that you'd like to work through in this session? Right. Oh man, look, this is cheaper than therapy, so I'll take it. Don't joke around here. Let's see. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got a bad grading on my uh on one of my Charizards. We'll start there. Oh geez, that's rough, uh, man. That is uh, rough. <laughs> I'm like living off of the fact that it's a shadowless and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, see, you are a good actor. You really got, but actually, no, that was, you were tapping into real emotion there. That, that felt heartfelt. That day. Thank you. Thank you. My, <laughs> my inner child. That's what they go with. I was trying to figure that out for the last five minutes. Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, God, why not? Right. Like, yeah. Use what you got. That's, that's the thing, right? Like this is what it's all about. And it's, you know, it's not like you're king. You know, you're not a you're not a, you're not an asshole that's trying to ruin people's lives. You know, like you're you're a nice guy, right? Like this is you like to I'm have fun. So happy you think so. Oh, it's like <laughs> live radio validation, right? That's, yeah. There you go. That's I'm what a it good is. guy. Yeah, right well, there. you're the best guy. You're such a good boy. Uh, keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask yeah you just said you're such a good boy is that what you said to the actor playing the dog <laughs> you know what i should i should reward sit good good you're a good boy yeah yeah no i i should have but i i don't know i feel like human resources would get called if i were to do that <laughs> so I'm just picturing you coming to set every once in a while with some like some biscuits, not like dog cookies, but like actually like and just go, here boy, here boy. Here, have a have a digestive. There you go. And I know you're supposed to be a robot, but just ha just have it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if we're allowed to validate people to, to that extent. Uh, you know, we'll I'll try it on the next. Set. There you go. There you go. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. you you never know what kind of movie you're going to get into where you're going to have a per person pretending to be a dog in it. So, like, yeah, why not? Yeah. It's true. Again, it's you've true. had a wide variety of roles, so they could go down, you know, a particular route. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, he's trying to say that I'm going to be the dog. Like, I'm gonna, <laughs> that's what, I'm going to get down there. Oh. As long as there's not a leash. That one I'd go method for. There you go. Yeah, that's a good one to be method for. Have your wife to lock you in like a kennel light each night. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. No, see, I think that's the that's the only time she would wouldn't lock me up if I was actually a dog. And if you were asking for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I can just see your kid is like, what's wrong with dad? I don't know. <laughs> Keeps barking at me. I was why is he whimpering now? Oh, well, well I think I Alex, they hit me think... with a Caesar <laughs> every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we made some good progress here today, Alex. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I think yeah. we're gonna have to schedule another session sometime down the road. Maybe your next project. We'll have you on. Yeah. We'll work out some demons. It will be good. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll find out Thank if you've you. learned fetch at that point, and yeah. uh, you know if you you learned to play dead. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, uh, anything but adulting, please. Right, <laughs> bro. I just had that conversation earlier today, where I was just like, it's "The days where I sit there and I go, oh man, I don't know how good I had. I didn't realize how good I had it at like thirteen or fourteen, you know, yeah. just sitting in the basement, playing some video games, eating a bag of chips, just chilling. Although I kind of yeah. do that now, so really <laughs> yeah, I was about much. to say, you just described your life. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh. Oh. I guess you didn't have Uber Eats back then or something like that. No, so. no, yeah, no. Right? Was, You'd actually yeah, have to I get was out. the Uber Eats, yeah. There you, have you to, go. You have to, you know, take the Toheel Express up to the KFC and get yourself some fries or whatever. And, you know, that yeah, would be an hour wait. later. You you were adulting more back then then, you know? You were at least yeah. fetching your own food. Jeez, oh, oh man. Don't ruin my, my nostalgia trip, Alex. Come on. I had, I had no idea that we were going to end up having a session with Mr. Green as well. That's uh, We've had a lot of breakthroughs here tonight. I, for one, think we, we had a breakthrough or two tonight. I do. Alex, I want to thank you for coming on the program. Yes. Uh, 
And of course, people, you can check out Code 8 Part 2. It's dropping next week on Netflix. Definitely check it out. Alex, thanks so much for coming on the program. And, Thank you. Uh, we look forward to finding out more adventures in your life in the future that may involve or may not involve dogs or Texan accents. Or both. <laughs> Thank you. Or Thank both. You for a dog with a Texan talk. accent. There you go. Yeah. If there's anybody making an animated film about a dog with a Texan accent, Alex is your guy. There we go. I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, just, right, oh, I just got a text from my wife saying, oh, she just ordered the kennel. There Perfect. You go. Wow. There we go. Great. It's all worked out. Yeah. Great. See? All right. Well, thank you. All. Alex, <laughs> I want to thank you again for coming on the show and look forward to everything you got coming down the pike. Thank you all for having me. Take care. Awesome. Take care, Thanks, man. Alex. Have a good one. <laughs>